Next.js 12 was released in the Next.js conf just yesterday. And this is their biggest release ever, or at least that's what they say. But when we look at the features in just a minute, uh, we'll see that there actually is a bunch of new great stuff uh, in the Next.js 12. I haven't had time to test all these features out yet, but I just want to make this video going through all the updates with you guys and giving you my thoughts on them. So here is a summary on what the new features are and let's check them out in a bit more detail. So let's start with the first one, so the Rust compiler. So Next.js 12 includes a brand new Rust compiler that takes advantage of native compilation. And they promise up to three times faster refresh and up to five times faster build times. And this sounds very good. It's always good when the uh, refresh and the build times are getting faster and faster. That means we can save time when developing the application. And there was actually a demo yesterday in the conference where they compared the old compiler with the Rust compiler in the Next.js repo. So they built the whole repo and I think it was like for the new compiler, the Rust compiler, it took around two minutes to compile all the files. And for the old compiler, it took something like four or five minutes. So it was much, much faster using the Rust compiler. And if we scroll down a little bit, they are saying that compilation using Rust is 17 times faster than using Bubble, which is pretty amazing. And also that the Rust compiler is enabled by default when using Next.js 12. And if you have an existing Bubble configuration, you will be automatically opted out for the Rust compiler. They are also planning on porting parsing for popular libraries like style components, emotion and relay. Uh, really soon. So that's good to hear. Next, they introduced middleware. And what middleware is, it basically enables you to use code over configuration. And what it means is we can actually run code before a request is completed. And based on the request, we can modify the response by rewriting, redirecting or adding headers, for example. So with middleware, we can implement things like authentication, bot protection, uh, handling unsupported browsers and logging and much more uh, directly inside our Next.js project. Middlewares is actually something I am thinking about testing out next and maybe making a video about it too. So uh, let me know in the comments if this is something you would like to see. Adding middleware is also pretty easy. All you need to do is add this uh, underscore middleware.js file and that's it. Next is the React 18 stuff. So React 18 features such as suspense and automatic patching of updates, for example, are now available under an experimental flag. So Next.js is also preparing for the React 18 when it moves towards a stable release. And with these preparations, server-side streaming and React server components are also available in Next.js 12 under the experimental features. Next is the ES module support and URL imports. So starting with Next.js 11.1, they added experimental support for ES modules being prioritized over common JS modules. And in Next.js 12, this is now the default, but importing NPM modules that only provide CommonJS is still supported. And then there is the URL imports. So again, under the experimental flag, Next.js 12 includes support for importing ES modules through URLs, meaning no install or separate build step is required, which sounds pretty awesome. This enables Next.js to process remote HTTPS resources exactly like local dependencies. So we can actually import modules as shown here. So we just, uh, after the from keyword, we just pass in the URL which from we want to import. So this sounds pretty cool and I'm eager to actually test how well this works in action. Next, we have the bot aware ISR fallback. So if you have been using ISR, uh, this is great news for you. And if you are not familiar with ISR, it basically means that you can create or update static pages after you have built your site. With ISR, static pages are generated on demand 
at runtime instead of build time. So what this update basically means is that when a crawler, for example, a search bot hits your site and a page that is not yet built, Next.js will automatically server render that page. This prevents crawlers from indexing loading states. Next, the AVIF image support. So the built-in image optimization API now supports AVIF images which result 20% smaller images compared to WebP images. This feature is opt-in and can be enabled by modifying the image.formats property in Next.js config file. Then we have the output file tracing. So output file tracing was also improved by bringing the virtual NFT package to Next.js 12, which means that Next.js 12 will automatically trace which files are needed by each page and API route and output these trace results next to the output. This allows integrators automatically leverage the traces Next.js provides. And what this also means in practice is that if you are deploying your application with tools like Docker, you will be able to make the Next.js output standalone in the future which means no dependencies will be required to be installed to run the application, which in turn reduces the Docker image size tremendously. And then there was also some other smaller improvements like adding app and document JS files no longer require a reboot of the Next.js CLI and the ESLint integration now supports single file linting with the file flag and Next.js 12 now supports setting custom TS config JSON path. And then there is also some breaking changes. So Webpack 4 is now officially removed since Webpack 5 was introduced in Next.js 11. And then target in the next config file is no longer needed. The next image component now uses span instead of div for wrapping the element and the minimum node version has been bumped. So all in all, I really think this was one of the biggest releases ever for Next.js. And this release really takes the UX as well as DX to another level. Even though a lot of features published are either in alpha or beta, but nevertheless, uh, they are improvements and features that you want to see. And I think they won't remain as experimental for too long. I am eager to actually test all these features and see how they work in action. So let me know in the comments, first of all, what do you think of these updates? And secondly, which of these new features you would like me to see to make a video about. If you are interested in looking the keynote of the conference or the other talks of the conference, I will leave a link in the description for those so you can check those out too. And before you go, hit the subscribe button below for more Next.js videos.